If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, beginning with verse 22. I thank the Lord for so many examples in the Bible of how He brought people through. He kept them. And it helps me to know that He can bring me through and keep me through whatever I'm going through. Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get into a ship and to go before Him into the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Now they were getting ready to go to um, Gennesaret. And of course, this was an important part of um, the ministry. But Jesus had went to pray. And he said, While I'm praying, you go ahead and go over there um, in this ship, and of course it started to storm. And of course they had been in storms before, and um, Jesus rebuked the storm, but this time Jesus wasn't there. But when the storm started happening, Jesus started working on the water. Now Peter, um, the great guy he was that always kind of jumped in the middle of everything, he must be a dear cousin of mine because, or I must be a dear cousin of his because I kind of do the same thing in life. I'm kind of right there and ready to jump in and do whatever. Um, sometimes for the good, but most of the time not for the good. Um, but he was uh, wanting to know what was going on and he wanted to find out for sure what was going on. And of course, Jesus said, "Be of good cheer. It is not I. It is I. Be not afraid." Of course, Peter said, "If it be thou, bid me unto thee on the water." And of course, he said, "Come." And at that moment, Peter was looking to Jesus. He was looking to Jesus, and he started walking on water. That is something that we and in ourselves could not do, but Peter looking unto the Lord, paying attention to Him, being focused on the Lord, was walking out to Jesus. It said in verse 30, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He started thinking about the things around him, the things that were bothering him, the things that were going on, probably looking at his feet, taking his eyes off Jesus and looking at those things that were going on around him. How am I able to walk on water? This is scary to me. And was no longer focused on the Lord, but thinking about how he could get through this storm. And many times in our lives, we do the same thing. We might start off looking to the Lord and saying, Lord, guide me in this situation 
But yet, after a while, we take our eyes off the Lord. When Peter was looking to the Lord, he was walking over the troubles that he had. He was walking over the water. He was walking over the the waves. But when he took his eyes off the Lord, he began to sink. And many times in my life, and I know in probably in your life, there was times when we've looked away from the Lord and began to sink in our lives. And we had to cry out, Lord, save me. And in His mercy, the Lord picks us up and takes care of us. But we have to make sure that we are focused on the Lord. There could be one time when the storm is just so bad that if we're not looking for the Lord, we might get swept away and not even be able to come and ask the Lord, help us, save us, be where we need to be. But when Peter was looking to the Lord, he was able to walk upon the sea. The Lord said, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? And to keep the faith, we have to totally be in our prayer closets at all times. We know that Jesus sent them off, but he was praying. And we have to be those of prayer so that we can be able to face these obstacles, so that we can be able to know who to look to. Because sometimes the devil allows us to forget who we should look to. And many times we look to ourselves to solve many of life's problems. When all the Lord wants us to do is look to me. When you're out at sea, when you're out getting um, swept away by the storms of this life, look to me and I will take care of you. There are so many examples in the Bible of where many look to Him. And when these people look to them, you can see that they had a prayer life that they prayed unto the Lord for help, for strength. They knew that they could not do anything without the Lord. And that's how what we should always remember. We can't do anything without the Lord. We can't do anything without Him holding our hand, directing our every step. Because many times when we get ourselves out from under the cover of the Lord, we get into a mess. We start sinking like Peter did. In Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3 and 13, we know the story quite well. But I want us to go back to this and think about this situation. Think about how God delivered We find three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose mind was stayed upon the Lord. And in verse 13, in chapter 3, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Now we know what happened. He's getting ready to tell them, what they did wrong. They weren't doing what they were supposed to do when the music was played. So they were ready to face the punishment according to what um, Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, We are not careful to answer thee on this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, 
Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They knew that God was going to deliver them one way or the other. You know, if they had to burn up in the fiery furnace, they would have gotten to see the Lord. But God was going to deliver them out of the fiery furnace for His glory. No doubt, these men were men of prayer. Without having a life of prayer, they would not have been able to stand up and say that. They probably would have ran for their lives or said, okay, whatever, or maybe even bowed down because they couldn't handle it no more, the thought of being put into a fiery furnace. Verse 19, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their clothes, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We find that it's so hot that only prayer could get you through these flames. It was only by the prayer of these men. The men that were um, sent from Nebuchadnezzar were destroyed. Then Nebuchadnezzar or verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the middle of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. These three men, as I said before, were men of prayer. They knew to look to the Lord to get him through, to get them through this trial that they were facing. This was a huge trial. It was one that none of us would want to go through. Some of us have been through storms before. Some of us maybe have been on a storm in a ship before. I don't know. But a fiery furnace, I've never been through a fiery furnace. I've never seen a fiery furnace. So I just don't know how that would be, but it sounds pretty deadly to me, according to Scripture. And they were bound and they couldn't do anything. They were in a test. They were in a trial. Far more than what my little worries are, they were in the midst of trouble. But they knew who to look to when they were in the midst of trouble. The reason why they were in the midst of trouble is because they were looking to Him already. They were in prayer to Him already. They sought the Lord many times. In Daniel chapter 6, we see Daniel praying to the Lord. It was because of his prayer that he was thrown into the den of lions. But God took care of him. He looked into the Lord and he was safe. He looked to the Lord kept his eyes on the Lord and knew that he would be delivered. 
in verse 16 of chapter 6, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Daniel's life had such an impact on this king that he actually said, he's going to deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of the Lord's that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and a sleep went from him. Then the king arose early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den and cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent an angel and hath shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. There again, I've never been faced with a den of lions before. But Daniel knew who could deliver him. He knew who could deliver him from this situation, and knew where his help cometh from. Do we know where our help comes from today? Even when we try to fix things, do we know who ultimately is the one that fixes it? It's the Lord. And we don't have to fret and worry when our mind is stayed upon the Lord. David was a man who got himself into many troubles. He knew of me, he got into himself into a mess, but he's considered one after God's own heart. He knew who to go to. When he failed, he knew that it was only the Lord that could help him through his situation. In Psalm 27, verse 1, The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the Lord is the strength of our life, when He is our light of salvation, why should we be afraid? When those things that come upon us, why should we be afraid? If the sea is roaring around us, we can keep our eyes upon the Lord. When maybe we're thrown into the middle of something, Keep our eyes upon the Lord. It says, When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Going down to verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as bring out cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good cheer, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait 
I say on the Lord. David had went through many things, but he knew that God delivered him through many tests and trials. Many things that he faced, and most of these things that he faced was of his own doing. And sometimes in this life we face things because we get ourselves into trouble. And then many times we try to get ourselves out of trouble. But when we look to the Lord and say, Lord, you take care of it. You take the wheel. I'm not driving my life anymore, but I want you to take it and guide me where I need to go. In Hebrews chapter 12, one of my favorite, couple of my favorite verses of Scripture In fact, I keep a bookmark here in, in this Bible I have. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. First off, these great cloud of witnesses, if you go back to Hebrews chapter 11, that's the faith chapter. That was a great cloud of witnesses. They were of the faith. They followed and were faithful unto the Lord. These that I've mentioned here today are those that went through obstacles, went through trials and troubles. But they looked unto the Lord, the author and finisher of their faith. And we today can look unto the Lord because He is our author. He is the finisher. He's the one that created us. And He has our best interest in mind. He knows and He holds tomorrow. He holds it. He knows what's going to happen to us tomorrow already. He knows that when we get into a bad situation, and if we look to Him, He will help us. He will guide us. But we have to stay close to Him. Close to Him every day. Not just, part, not just a few days here and there but keep the communication going on with Him that He, we can allow Him to be the author of our lives. That He can write what we need on our hearts to get through tests and trials. We may not ever face a den of lions. We may not ever face a storm on the water or a fiery trial or someone after us coming out to, after us to kill us. But some things we face things in this life that we don't think we can go through. We don't think we might could go through a death of a loved one or uh, maybe a financial battle or um, maybe um, losing a home, losing a job. We might not think we can go through these things. But when we keep our eyes upon the Lord, He will direct us. He will keep us. He will allow us to walk over our troubles, walk over those things when we keep our eyes upon Him. It's only when we look to other things, other sources, maybe other people, maybe to ourselves to try to fix things. That's when we get into trouble. But when we look unto the Lord. When Peter got out of the boat... He was focused on the Lord and the source of His power. Then, Peter focused it on the problems that was going on with him, the problems that surrounded him. We will sink when we get distracted from the Lord. Distractions can come in many forms. Some are obvious, some are subtle. The devil throws stuff at us any way he can and allows things to happen to us. Some 
obvious. We can spot those. Some just creep in. Peter gets distracted by obvious things. Could have been the thunder booming, the lightning cracking, the wind whipping around, the waves pounding. There was a storm going on around Peter. It's easy to see why he got distracted. He was just ready to go. He saw Jesus. He was one of these guys that were just ready to go at anything. Jesus said, come on. He wanted to check out to make sure that was really Jesus out there, I'm sure. Because they were saying, oh, it was a spirit. Just a few moments ago, Peter was hiding in the boat from the storm. Many times we get scared of things that look like it will overtake us. And when we turn to Jesus for the source, for His source to guide us for peace and for power, we can overcome these obstacles. We can overcome whatever's thrown on us. I don't know what we're going through today. Everybody, I don't know what I, Brother Chris is going through. I know some things, but I probably don't know everything right now because I've not talked to him in about two hours. And I don't know what could be going on right now. And I don't know what's going on in each of your lives, but I know who can help us through it. I know who we can go to. And when we stay close to the Lord, He can help us and guide us. He knows what we're going through already. He's just ready for us to say, Lord, save me. Lord, save me from this trouble that I'm going through right now. Save me from this situation because I can't bear it by myself. I can't bear whatever I'm going through without You. We see that in the Bible, if these guys hadn't prayed, they wouldn't have been able to get through these things. They would have been burned up. Just like the mightiest of men bound them up and threw them in there. They were mighty men. They probably ate the king's meat, so to speak. Of course, we know that the pulse was a lot better for God's men there at the time. But these mighty men threw them in. And got burned up just by throwing them in. They weren't even inside. But those mighty men weren't looking into the Lord. They didn't really know who the Lord was. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew. And they knew who to go to. They knew who to pray to. This time I want us to go and ask the Lord. Take time and say, ask the Lord to help us. And remind us where our strength comes from. We might be okay right now. We might be having a great day and nothing bothering us. But as sure as we're having a good day, something's going to be thrown at us. And that's the time that we need to make sure that we're prayed up, ready to face whatever comes our way, knowing that by faith the Lord's going to take care of it. He's going to get us through when we look to Him. And we can walk over the water. We can be just like Peter and just like the Lord. Look unto the Lord, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us pray.